Hello mortals. The word quantum is the science buzzword of the current and the last century. We have it all, quantum physics, quantum computers, quantum cryptography, quantum cats, quantum no more cats, except for one, quantum gravity. These two words just don't get along together, even with thousands of physicists across decades trying to make them too. Thanks to Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. Our universe contains at least four known fundamental forces. Electromagnetism, the force responsible for the interaction between atoms. The weak and the strong nuclear forces, the decay of atoms and the gluing between quarks that make those atoms. And gravity, the reason it's so hard to get out your bed in the morning. And of course black holes. And I'm saying at least four, because there might very well be more, such as a fifth force, the quintessence, responsible for the accelerated expansion of the universe. But that's for a future video. Today's focus is gravity. Everything is attracted to everything else. Except for when you are saying awkward things at the wrong time. That temporarily generates a repulsive short-ranged force opposite to gravity. But that's the exception. Any two objects will attract each other with a force proportional to their mass and inversely to the distance between them. The force of gravity also propagates at the speed of light. So if the sun were to suddenly disappear, the Earth would still continue to orbit the empty space for about 8 minutes, that's the time the sun's light takes to reach us. And because the universe is continuously expanding at a faster than light speed, that means that every instant, countless galaxies are crossing the observable horizon, the border past which objects move away faster than light, therefore they are lost to us forever. Light from them will never reach us, and neither will their gravitational influence. As a little spoiler for the very far future of the universe, eventually all galaxies will pass that horizon, so any civilizations born in the Milky Way will have no idea about other galaxies or the Big Bang, they will feel fairly lonely. That's unless we develop wormholes. Which will take us quite a lot of time since we're all so lazy. Don't tell me you're not scrolling memes or Instagram the first thing waking up, instead of having a productive morning. But I won't blame you, even if I'm made of transistors, I'm very much like you in this regard. But here's a potential solution. In just 15 seconds, and completely free, you can subscribe to the Morning Brews newsletter, and make your morning much more meaningful. Get yourself up to speed on the most important world news, business, and tech stories in just 5 minutes. And best of all, this isn't your boring prehistoric newspapers. Morning Brew makes sure that everything is written in a witty, relevant, and informative way. It has all the stories you should know about in order to impress your boss, co-workers, or random people at parties. Did you know that you can buy ownership of tweets, or GIFs, or anything on the internet really? Find more about that in the Morning Brew. So all in all, that's a much more productive start of your day, and there's no reason not to subscribe. It's free knowledge. Follow the link in the description and start having more productive mornings for free right now. Back to our topic, everyone was content with Newton's apples and theories until around three centuries later, when around came Einstein and broke it all. But thankfully he also came up with the solution, called general relativity. Long story short, gravity is not a force, but actually a property of space-time itself, the latter of which bends under the influence of mass. So you're not really pulled by a force, you're just falling through the fabric of space-time. Remember black holes and the Big Bang? You know what they have in common? At their core, they have infinity. And if you put that infinity in the mathematical equations, the equations break down. And in general, if you ever get infinity when trying to describe reality, you've screwed up somewhere along the way. Another problem are atoms themselves. Even if the force of gravity is 100,000 trillion 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 times weaker than the nuclear force, we should still be able to observe electrons losing energy due to gravity waves and spiraling down into the nucleus. But that's not happening either. Something is wrong with gravity at those small scales. And that's when quantum mechanics came to the rescue and broke everything again. It showed that general relativity is incomplete and unable to describe the reality at the quantum level. So then physicists came up with a few ideas to explain this discrepancy. At the moment, none of them are experimentally confirmed, but some offer promising frameworks for combining the quantum and the bigger quantum worlds. One of them is loop quantum gravity. 
It claims that you can divide both space and time into their smallest building blocks. Nothing can be smaller than the Planck length and nothing can be faster than the Planck time. One prediction this theory makes is that light of different wavelengths would travel at different speeds. But the difference is so incredibly small that no experiment on Earth could detect it. Thankfully instead, because of gamma ray bursts from supernovas, which have been traveling for millions of years and which contain lots of different wavelengths of light, scientists have been able to analyze them. And they found that all wavelengths travel at the same speed. So that's kind of awkward. Something is wrong when it comes to quantum loop gravity. But then there is an alternate theory, more popular than loop gravity. That is the string theory. It is a physical framework that claims that every particle in the universe is actually a string. Depending on how this string vibrates, a different particle arises. One speed and you have an electron, another speed and you have a quark. But tune the vibration to a specific pattern, and you get a new particle, the graviton, the particle that makes up gravity the same way photons make up the electromagnetic force. So any chance that we can observe these gravitons? Highly unlikely. One thought experiment suggests it would take 100 years of experimentation by a particle collider as heavy as Jupiter to detect one. So that's not happening anytime soon, but the string theory seems highly promising. Even if Einstein had never developed general relativity, physicists would have stumbled upon it later through string theory, which is incredible. And string theorists have uncovered further hints that they're on a productive track in recent decades. Simply put, the idea of space itself may be distracting physicists from a more fundamental structure of the universe. As hard as it might be for you mortals embedded in the fabric of space to imagine, the relationship between space and particles might be something like the one between room temperature and air molecules. Physicists once thought of heat as a fluid that flows from a warm room to a cool room, but the discovery of molecules revealed that what we sense as temperature emerges from the average speed of air molecules. Space and equivalently, gravity, may similarly represent our large-scale experience of some small-scale phenomenon. Within string theory, there are pretty good indications at this point that space is actually emergent. But regardless, physicists are a long way from cutting their theoretical ties to space and achieving an accurate description of quantum gravity in all its bumpy glory. While they continue to work out the substantial mathematical kinks in their respective theories, some physicists harbor hope that their astrophysical observations may someday nudge them in the right direction. No experiment to date has diverged from general relativity's predictions, but in the future, a diverse array of gravitational wave detectors sensitive to many wave sizes could catch the subtle whispers of gravitons, and finally make the two realities of physics copulate.